Hey guys, today I'm going to be going through the important details and steps needed to remove and install the jet pump in an IBR equipped CD Spark and how to replace the wear ring. If you have a hole in the side of your wear ring, or if it's just badly grooved up like these, then it's definitely time to replace it. This is the assortment of tools I recommend you have on hand when you get ready to remove and install your jet pump. I personally prefer to remove the IBR bucket first so you can get better access to the hardware for the jet pump. The first thing you need to do is remove the 13mm bolt, washers and nut holding the IBR motor arm to the gate. The next thing you do is remove the two IBR bucket pivot bolts. It's easiest to do this with a 13mm ratcheting wrench. Here is a better look at the locations of the three pieces of hardware for the IBR bucket. The bucket is removed for clarity. Now, with the IBR bucket removed, you need to disconnect the steering cable, mechanical build siphon hose on top, and the three 13mm bolts closest to the transom plate. This is a non-IBR model pump shown here. After those items are removed, you should be able to grab the pump with both hands and pull it out as an assembly. These two pictures show the IBR equipped pump with bucket removed and bucket on. As you can see with the bucket on, it's considerably more bulky and cumbersome. Once you remove your wear ring, check your impeller for nicks and gouges and clean them up as needed. Also, check your mechanical build siphon fitting to see if it needs to be re-glued to the pump housing. It's a common problem for it to be loose. With your pump out of the way, take a moment and check your dry shaft splines for damage or corrosion and be sure you have a hole drain plug for the right side drain tube, but not one in the left side tube. That is your exhaust system flush port. When you finish cleaning up or replacing your impeller, take a few minutes to lube up your drive shaft and impeller splines with triple guard grease that makes reassembly easier and prevents corrosion on both. Apply Loctite 572 on the impeller nose cone threads and install the cone. It is typically reverse threaded. This is the assembled jet pump without the wear ring. Take a second or two to install the wear ring on the pump itself and on the transom plate. Be sure the pump moves freely, the wear ring fits properly, and the front seal is installed on the new wear ring. I prefer to line the wear ring alignment notches with the mounting bolt protrusion rather than the plastic water tube because when the wear ring spins, it is less likely to damage your water tube. Here's a better look at what it looks like installed. When you install the whole pump with the wear ring, you just need to align the notches with the metal protrusion rather than the water tube. This is easier when you have a wear ring with two plastic alignment notches. Some have only one notch. Now we're ready to reinstall the jet pump. Make sure you have a good o-ring on your water tube and be sure you have greased your drive shaft and impeller splines. Here are a couple views of the jet pump and wearing. Slide your wearing around the impeller with the rubber seal facing outward and line up the tabs with the bolt hole location rather than the water inlet. Take a few moments to clean up the hardware on the wire wheel so it's easier to install with fresh thread locker. This is what the pump looks like installed. Before you install the bolts, make sure you got the steering cable routed through the pump and everything lines up properly. Now apply blue Loctite to the mounting bolts and use a 13mm swivel socket with long extension and ratchet to tighten them. It's kind of a weird angle to get them installed, but just make sure you don't cross thread them when tightening them up. Attach your bilge pump siphon hose and secure with a hose clamp. Now you can install the bolt nut and washer to secure your steering cable. This is what the hardware should look like installed. Before you install your reverse gate, make sure these components move freely. Make sure you have both reverse gate bushings and bolt stop collars installed before you install it on the pump. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please take a moment and do so. I have a lot more videos to come. Apply blue Loctite on the gate pivot bolts and use a ratcheting 13mm wrench to install them. This is what the hardware looks like for the reverse gate to attach the IBR motor arm. Before installing the IBR motor arm mount hardware, make sure the gate moves freely. Install the hardware like shown here. If you enjoyed this video or just found it helpful, please smash the like button. Subscribe to my channel to see more cool videos like this one. And don't forget to check out my description for links to the tools and materials I used in this video.